When I got into this business, they told me I'd have to play the game to get what I want. Two weeks ago, Drew McIntyre played the game in a match to earn us a title shot. That shit doesn't come easy. And he made that match all about him. So I let him know how I felt. This isn't about titles, this isn't about records. He wants to make his name here and I respect that. But you step on my toes, the Death Rider comes for you. Wednesday Night Storm, three weeks after Nitro 9, and we open fittingly with John Moxley. We heard what he said at the beginning of the episode regarding Drew McIntyre, and I think everybody knows Mox means business. Mox always means business. So we'll see what he does here to Drew McIntyre in this match. But ladies and gentlemen, We've got, we've got an excellent card coming up for you tonight. We will see the new Intercontinental Champion, Kofi Kingston, coming out and addressing the GAW faithful. We'll see a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a consolation match, I guess you could say, with a couple tag teams. This is the Limitless Legion takes on British Strong Style. And then in our main event of the evening, the Cruiserweight Championship is on the line. Sin Cara beat Ricochet last week with the Hammerlock DDT, and now Sin Cara will get a chance to become the second man in two weeks to win a title from a man who won at Nitro 9. And of course, answering the call from John Moxley is the Scottish psychopath himself, and if we go back and just take a look at what happened two weeks ago, Wednesday Night Storm after Nitro 9, we take a look at this massive eight-man tag team match. It was McIntyre who was absolutely tearing it up. But he stayed in just a little bit too long, didn't tag in his partners, and unfortunately then, ate the pinfall after a black mass from Alistair Black. And so Moxley then later in the night, well, not that much later, it was just a few minutes, Moxley found McIntyre in the back, gave him a piece of his mind, and now he's got his match. It's Moxley versus McIntyre next. It's, a, it's an understandably fast start from both of these men. Moxley sends McIntyre over the top rope, going up top now himself. Moxley just immediately setting up McIntyre for the elbow drop and McIntyre evades. Moxley not happy at all with McIntyre's actions in that eight-man tag match, and I don't blame him. I don't blame him. I don't think Moxley got into that match. McIntyre stayed in probably longer than, than he should have, uh, taking the amount of punishment that he did, despite the fact that he that he really tore it up he he put on a great performance but of course that was a match about winning for your team and speaking of that of course flashback to last week we'll show you this photo that was captured we were meant to hear from Alistair Black the man who pinned Drew McIntyre and earned his team uh one someone from his team a chance at the number one contendership for Samoa Joe's world championship well Tonight, we should be hearing from Kazuchika Okada from Japan. He's currently there preparing for an IWGP Heavyweight Championship match, but we should be hearing from him as he will also be involved in the Fatal 4-Way to decide the next number one contender, which we can officially 
announced is happening in two weeks. Neither of these men, unfortunately, will be involved. Also an official announcement, we'll be hearing from Samoa Joe next week regarding the mysterious circumstances around Aleister Black and then, I assume, whatever it is that Kazuchika Okada will say tonight. Meanwhile, Moxley just going to town here on McIntyre. Coming off the rope with the forearm, Bulldog. Great showing from Moxley here. This match is all about pride. No number one contendership, no belts on the line, nothing. This is about Moxley understanding. Big, big forearm from McIntyre. This is about Moxley understanding that McIntyre in many ways cost Moxley and the rest of his team a chance of becoming the number one contender. And we know that Moxley settles his differences in the ring. And you want to talk about two of the most dangerous moves, two of the most dangerous maneuvers in all of GAW. Drew McIntyre's Claymore, we saw it. We saw it used to great effect in that match two weeks ago. And it looks like he's going to pull it out now. Looking for the Claymore on John Moxley. Got it. McIntyre lands the Claymore. One, two, three. McIntyre puts Moxley away with the Claymore. Wow, what a statement. What a statement from Drew McIntyre. Moxley was the one who attacked him backstage. Moxley was the one who called him out. As we saw as we saw at the beginning of the show. And McIntyre comes out, destroys Moxley with that Claymore. So what's next for John Moxley? Not in the number one contender's picture. Drew McIntyre isn't either. So who knows what's next for these guys? These are two of the most dangerous men in GAW. So we'll wait to see what's next. But up next for us, it's Limitless Legion and British Strong Style. Tag team action this evening. These are two teams that lost in the first round of the tag team title tournament. Limitless Legion out first. And these are two teams that obviously have bright futures. And, of course, uh, when it comes to British Strong Style, Pete Dunn is a former tag team champion in GAW. So both of these teams will be looking to get back on track. The semifinals of the tag team title tournament will uh, begin next week. Both matches will happen next week. And here is a quick reminder of the bracket. These are the matchups that you can look forward to. Two juicy matchups on tap. But for tonight, the Legion and British Strong Style, certainly a great matchup in and of itself. Can't wait. Well, these are two teams that are made up of guys that were primarily singles competitors for basically their entire careers. Come here to GAW. Only Pete Dunne has uh, extensive tag team experience in general admission wrestling of course he's a former tag team champion with Drew McIntyre a few years back he's hoping to bring some of that experience to help Tyler Bate along so these two teams looking to get back on track after losses in the first round of the tag team tournament this match is next well, it's Lee and Dunn to start things off. And Lee, as he tends to do, rocketing out of that corner with the big drop kick. And now Lee, with his version of the, flo of, of the floating bro, we've seen Matt Riddle use that running sent on to great effect. Now Lee going for the dragon sleeper on Dunn. Feels a little bit early in the match for that, especially against a man that's so well-versed in so many submissions the way Pete Dunn is sending Lee into the corner now we'll see Tyler Bate Lee off the rope rebound massive 
double back body drop. But Lee just immediately, immediately gets up out of that. And now we'll see Matt Riddle into the match for the first time. And he sends bait. Riddle, atomic drop, big boot from Keith Lee. My goodness. That's got to be, that's at least size 15s right there from Keith Lee. Tyler Bate avoids the knee, and now Northern Lights suplex. It looked like Riddle's head, or his, or his legs, I'm sorry, may have, may have caught the turnbuckles there. Bate working on the neck. You can see the influence that all of these men have had on each other. We saw, obviously, Lee bust out the floating bro earlier, and now we see Tyler Bate working on the arm. And we know that's where Pete Dunn's specialty is. And now a Northern Lights from the original bro. Riddle throws bait into the corner. Bringing Lee back in. Look at the agility of Keith Lee. You just have to admire two big elbows. You really have to admire just the little things that Keith Lee does that are so athletic. You don't see a man of his size doing things like jumping over the top rope. I mean, stepping over it, maybe. Bate here contemplating his next move. Might be getting a little strategy from Dunn in the corner, maybe, and now he tags in his partner, Pete Dunn. Lots of double team action so far. Drop toe hold, and now Dunn with the elbow drop. Lots of tag team maneuvers. Oh, Dunn working on the fingers, biting the hand. I mentioned that this is where Dunn is at his best. He is a joint manipulator. He is an expert tactician. Look at this fast and fluid movement from both of these teams. And again, drop, big boot. They've given one now to both Bates and Dunn. And now Riddle going for the cover. Feet are on the ropes. Tyler Bate, does he notice? Dunn kicked out. And now both Bate and Dunn in the match. And Dunn grinding Riddle's head straight into the mat. And it follows up with a stomp. 15-minute time limit here in this match. We've elapsed just about four and a half minutes of that. But so much action. Just in those four and a half minutes, Bate now rolling heel kick. Riddle answers with the jawbreaker and throwing Bate back into his own corner where Lee is waiting. Tag in here. Riddle, Hurricane Rana into the power bomb from Lee. Unbelievable offense from these two. You can see how and why they work so well together. Lee being as athletic as he is, Riddle with his martial arts background. Bait ducks that massive chop. And now he brings Lee back in. Strong style will answer with their own move, and it's a big one. Inzaguri, brain buster. Done going for the cover off of that. That's classic strong style. Riddle is there. I don't know if Bait thought maybe Riddle had had been dumped to the outside. I'm not quite sure. Didn't seem to be too concerned. Lee shakes off that strike from Dunn into the corner. Lee tags in Riddle. Snapmare. Riddle with the neck breaker and into the kick. The variety of moves from these two is really something special. Riddle going up top. Ten minutes left in this match. Floating bro from Riddle. Nobody home. But Dunn couldn't quite capitalize on it. Riddle kicks him and now sends him to the outside. Maybe we'll get some much needed respite in this match. Riddle laying in those kicks. And no boot at all. I mean, that is just straight skin on skin contact. Little of, Riddle, of course, uh, barefooted competitor. Very atypical in the pro wrestling world. Massive chop sends down Pete Dunne.
the stakes here, I mean, obviously this isn't for a number one contendership or, or anything like that, but for both these teams, they're relatively new to the game, at least compared to teams like the Usos and the Young Bucks and, uh, and the Lucha Brothers. And remember, count out here is 15 seconds, not 10. Dunn starting to think about getting Riddle back into the ring here. Sends him against the steel steps. Dunn breaks the count in the ring, but is he going to sit there and wait for a count out? This would be something. We already saw the Usos do this against Gorillas of Destiny. Dunn's not going to come out. Dunn's going to wait there. British Strong Style takes the count out victory. Wow, that is shocking. That is shocking. This match had been so great up until that moment. Pete Dunn decides to take the count out victory, leaving Riddle on the outside after throwing him through the steel steps. And, they're, and, and they are celebrating. To them, it's a victory. And I suppose in the record books, it, it looks like a victory. Wow. I am very surprised. Well, up next, we've got the newly minted Intercontinental Champion, Kofi Kingston, addressing the GAW faithful. This is why I'm here. This is why GAW is the greatest wrestling on planet Earth. I've always dreamt of going home to show all the kids who grew up like I did that they can do anything they, they want to do. It's not just empty words. My journey has not always been easy. But this company, all of you, gave me a chance to live my dream. And I believe in the legacy of this title. I believe in earning this title night after night. And I believe in... We haven't seen Walter in several months. I, I don't envy Kofi Kingston being in there with him. Congratulations, Kofi. I'm happy for you. But we all know what this title means. This is the workhorse title, the belt, given to the finest technicians in the world. And that's what I am. You don't need to interrupt me. Adam Cole was fighting days after winning this belt, and I intend to do the same. I hope you do. No one escapes the ring general. Well, it seems like in no uncertain terms, it's been Walter who has announced his intention to come for the Intercontinental title, so we'll have to see what happens with that going forward. But for now, let's go to the potential future IWGP Heavyweight Champion, Kazuchika Okada from Japan. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for that. I'm not... Uh, I'm not quite sure why uh, our connection dropped with, with Okada there. Um, obviously, we had done all of our testing earlier, so uh, we'll get you some, some updates on that, hopefully, uh, later on in the night. It'll have to be during this match, because this is our main event. Sin Cara takes on the cruiserweight champion of the world, Ricochet. What a great opportunity this is for Sin Cara. And of course, in GAW, these kinds of things are earned. We saw it with Kofi Kingston. And I think it's a perfect segue to talking about what is going on between Charlotte Flair and Asuka. Because of course, we've seen... We've seen Sin Cara and we've seen Kofi Kingston earn themselves title opportunities because of phenomenal performances in the ring, and yet we've seen Charlotte Flair, for whatever reason, has chosen to to deal with her issues 
with Asuka in a totally separate way, and Asuka took the night off after the beating that she received at the hands of Charlotte Flair and a baseball bat last week. And Charlotte Flair sent out just this cryptic tweet this morning. She says, quote, next week. So I'm not sure what she means, if that's what we're going to learn, what her motivations are, or what she hopes to gain from attacking Asuka like this. For now, it is a cruiserweight championship match between Sin Cara and Ricochet, and it's our main event. No time limit here championship on the line in our main event. Of course, Ricochet last week going down to Sin Cara. Sin Cara using the Hammerlock DDT to put away the Cruiserweight Champion. Ricochet trying to become, trying to avoid becoming the second man in two weeks to lose a title that he won at Nitro 9. I really can't get over how incredible it is that Kofi Kingston beat Adam Cole for the Inter Intercontinental title. Inter Intercontinental title, wow. Uh, it's been a long episode. <laughs> it, it's really incredible. And speaking of Kofi Kingston, he's just made it official. We've, we've heard now the official word, Kofi Kingston against Walter next week. Non-title action, but Walter will get his chance to back up what he said tonight. That match is next week. Speaking of what we've learned now, oh, it's Sin Cara going to pin the champion. Ricochet kicks out. Speaking of what we've learned now, here is photo uh, from another security camera of somebody uh, apparently tampering with a with an electrical breaker box. Uh, according to the time, this was just about 15 minutes ago, so it was very recent. And we're hearing officially. Hang on a second, Buddy Murphy? Buddy Murphy is here! Into the ring. What's he gonna do? What's he gonna. Oh my god! Oh my god, Murphy has attacked Sin Cara. The match is out. Disqualification. Murphy hits Murphy's Law. That's it. The match is over. Sin Cara officially wins, but. Did Murphy do that for Kingston? Or, uh, did, or I'm sorry, did Murphy do it for, for, for Ricochet? I can't. Ricochet is the champion and will remain the champion after disqualification, of course, with champion's advantage. So many questions to answer next week. What's going to happen with Charlotte and Asuka? What's going to happen now with Buddy Murphy and Sin Cara? Kofi Kingston in action against Walter. Plus, who is... This mystery man, is it the same person who's been walking around attacking Aleister Black? We'll have to wait until next episode. Wednesday Night Storm continues. Subscribe to GA Sports to get all of Wednesday Night Storm. We appreciate it.